Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Maureen Demler and I serve as deacon at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Wednesday in the fourth week after Epiphany. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson comes from the letter to the Galatians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. Tell me, you who desire to be subject to the law, will you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and the other by a free woman. One, the child of the slave, was born according to the flesh. The other, the child of the free woman, was born through the promise. Now this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One woman, in fact, is Hagar from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the other woman corresponds to the Jerusalem above. She is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you childless one, you who bear no children. Burst into song and shout, you who endure no birth pangs. For the children of the desolate woman are more numerous than the children of the one who is married. Now you, my friends, are children of the promise, like Isaac. But just as at that time the child who was born according to the flesh persecuted the child who was born according to the Spirit, so it is now also. But what does the Scripture say? Drive out the slave and her child, for the child of the slave will not share the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children not of the slave, but of the free. Here ends the lesson. Many people regard today's reading as the most difficult passage in the Epistle to the Galatians. For one thing, it presupposes a knowledge of the Old Testament, which many people do not possess. For another, the argument of Paul is a somewhat technical one. It is the kind which would have been familiar in the Jewish rabbinical schools. Nevertheless, the message of today's verses is right up to date and is especially relevant to religious people. According to today's first verse, it is addressed to those who desire to be under the law. There are many such today. Paul was writing to Jews and Judaizers, but people today may imagine that the way to God is by the observance of certain rules. There are professing Christians who turn the gospel into law. They suppose that their relationship to God depends on a strict adherence to regulations, traditions, and ceremonies. To such people, Paul says, You who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? He meets the Judaizers and refutes them on their own ground. You want to be under the law, he asks? Then just listen to the law. For the very law whose servant you want to be will be your judge and condemn you. There are three stages in Paul's argument. The first is historical. 
In the historical verses, Paul reminds his readers that Abraham had two sons, Ishmael, the son of a slave, and Isaac, the son of a free woman. And Isaac was not born according to nature. His father was a hundred years old, and his mother was over ninety. These two differences Paul recognizes as an allegory. Everyone is a slave by nature until, in the fulfillment of God's promise, he or she is set free. So everyone is either an Ishmael or an Isaac, either still what he or she is by nature a slave, or, by the grace of God, set free. The two women stand for two covenants. An understanding of the Bible is impossible without an understanding of the two covenants. Our Bibles are divided into the Old and New Testaments, meaning the Old and New Covenants. A covenant is a silent, solemn agreement between God and men by which he makes them his people and promises to be their God. God established the Old Covenant through Moses and the New Covenant through Christ. The Old Covenant was based on law, but the New Covenant is based on promises. Today's passage teaches us the glory of being a Christian believer, two great privileges. First, we inherit the promises of the Old Testament. We Christians are Abraham's seed, who inherit the blessing promised to his descendants. Secondly, we experience the grace of God, his gracious initiative to save us. The religion of Isaac is a religion of grace, of what God has done and does, a religion of divine initiative and divine intervention. So we must seek to be like Isaac, not like Ishmael. We must put our trust in God through Jesus Christ, for only in Christ can we inherit the promises, receive the grace, and enjoy the freedom of God. Let us pray. Father, today when we are tormented by the ruthless demands and perfect standards of the law, remind us that we are, by virtue of Christ, free. We are true spiritual children of Abraham and Sarah. Give us the wisdom and strength to cast away all legalistic thoughts. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us on Saturday at 4.30 or on Sunday at 8 or 9.30. If you are unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our website provides information on all our offerings.